All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is gonna be part three of our three video series. First one, we loaded some GPX tracks onto our cell phones with Onyx, Gaia, and Avenza. The second video, we took large GPX files and condensed them down to KML files to allow you to go ahead and put those larger files into Onyx, Gaia, also Avenza. In this video, I'm gonna actually show you how to go through and create a track on your own without ever leaving your house. So without any further delay, let's jump right into it. Let's go back to Google Earth, and I wanna show you how you can create one of these tracks like this without ever leaving your computer. All right, so I live over here in Jacksonville, and this, the top of the fingers are, and this is the Osceola National Forest right here, as you can see outlined there. When I go, I go down I-10, and I get off on Glen St. Mary's, and I take 125 all the way up until it uh, hits the area of the forest that I'm going to. So today we're gonna to start Road 202, which is Carver Mill. All right, so once you get here to where your starting point, you think your starting point's gonna be, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna come up here to add. You're gonna add a folder. Uh, untitled folder, I'm just gonna call it Osceola Overnighter. Okay, and so that creates that folder. Once that folder is created, you'll be able to add your points and your tracks to that folder. Another thing I like to do is I like to go ahead and come in and add another folder to that folder, and I'll add waypoints and then I'll add one more folder and I will call that tracks. So now I have my waypoints folder and my tracks folder. All right, so here we are, 125 and 202. So I'll come up here to this yellow marker, click on that. It's gonna bring up this pop-up. Uh, over here on the right, there'll be a pin with a yellow square flashing around it. I can take that pin and move it to where I want it. We'll put it right there. We'll come back over here. We will rename this 202. That's where the start of 202 is. So what else I'll, I like to do is I like to get rid of that yellow marker because I think they look crappy um, on, on my Google Earth and on Onyx or Gaia. It puts some funky character there and it just it gums up everything. So if you click on the yellow icon, you go down here to no icon, it takes that icon away and it puts your 202 exactly where your pinpoint was for the icon, if that makes sense. Click OK. Now down here in the description, you can add notes. So we'll say Highway 125 and Forest Service Road 202. OK, and there it is. There's your notes. So that it ended up going into tracks. No big deal. Just click and hold and drag it up to waypoints. So I think what we'll do is we'll go through and find all of our waypoints first and then we'll come back and build tracks. So let's scroll out. So if we end up getting into a mood where we wanna do some mud riding, this road right here is Sanderson's Cut. It's a lot of fun, it's very deep. Be careful with that. We'll go back up here, we'll, we'll go ahead and mark it just in case we wanna try it when we get there. Add place mark. So now as you see, the place mark comes up over here, but there's no icon and you can't grab it and move it anywhere. So it's kind of a pain in the butt, what you have to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and label it first. Sanderson cut. Then I will go over here, click on that where there's no icon. I will pick whatever, it doesn't matter what icon you pick. Then it comes up where you can actually move it. So click on it, drag it. I want it to be right there in the middle. And then you go back to no icon. It drops it right where you want it. Okay, okay. All right, let's keep on rolling. All right, so from Sanderson's Cut, we know we're gonna come down 202, and we're gonna come up here to 245 or River Road. We're gonna add a place mark there, call this 245. Again, we'll click on that, click on any icon, does not matter. We'll put it right dead in the center of the intersection. No icon, okay, you can add a note if you want. A good thing to put in your notes might be, as you're going through here and marking these waypoints, is to go ahead and put like, make left here. So we'll say make left. Now I know when I go back to draw my track that I'm gonna make a left here and come down to Williams. And you can see it is right there. Say you made a mistake on it, right click it, scroll down to properties and it pops it back up and you can change this. All right, so we will come through uh, road 245. All right, so we know we're gonna go through here and let's say our goal is to get to Our goal is to get here. This is big camp. This is where we're gonna have lunch. 
So we'll go ahead and mark that. We already know that Big Camp is there. Uh, we found it on Onyx or uh, Avenza or something like that. So we know where, we already know where it's at. So we're gonna label this Big Camp. So that's pretty close, but we're gonna move it just a little bit. So click on any one of those icons. Big Camp goes right dead center. No icon, perfect. And then we'll put lunch. We found Big Camp, that's where we're gonna have lunch. Now let's go find Sand Hill where we're actually gonna sleep. All right, so we'll zoom out. We will slide over to where Sand Hill Camp is, which is somewhere right here. Uh, it is in this area right here. So we will go ahead and place a marker. That's probably close enough because it's somewhere in this area. Uh, we'll call this Sand Hill Camp. All right, so we have Sand Hill Camp there. So let's go back to 245 and 202 right here. So we've gone through the homestead. We're gonna travel right on down. All right, we can see this goes out here uh, to Highway 250. Let's see what we have in here. So this is the East Tower. So we'll go ahead and label that. Got lucky on the marker again. So this is a campsite. It's also got little trails that go, they go all the way back to where this little river finger is and you can fish. And I think there's campsites back there that you can stay at. Um, I've never actually stayed at the East Tower. Uh, we always try to get as far away from anything as we can. There's the East Tower, so now we've got a decision to make. Which way do we want to go? When we hit 250, we can either go right, and we can go up to Forest Road 232, and take that all the way to Big Camp. Or we could make a left and come down to 277. It doesn't matter which way you go, they'll both get you there. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to make a right. So maybe here for East Tower, we'll go back into that, right click that, go back down to Properties, and we're going to say make right at 250 we'll add highway in there so we're not confused so now we know when we get to the east tower we'll make a right at 250 we'll come down to here this is highway 250 and forest road 232 we'll go to placement so you can see that one's a little bit off we'll mark it right there no icon 232 so we're gonna take 232, and we know we're gonna go all the way down through Buckhead. So this big intersection is where 235 comes this way and 232 crosses. So we'll go ahead and label that. Roll over, no icon, okay. Buckhead, and here for the comments, we'll just say go straight. All right, so we're gonna continue on 232. It's gonna bend around a little bit, roll out. Uh, here is Forest Road 212. So we'll add 212 there. We'll move the icon over to the intersection. Get rid of the icon. Okay, make right. Alright, and then we'll go up a little bit to this Forest Road 212D, add another place mark. Now obviously you don't have to add this many place marks if you don't want to. I'm just kind of illustrating for the purposes of the video. No icon, okay. This is 212D, make a right. And then we will be at Big Camp for lunch. Alright, so we're going to take the adventurer's way out of Big Camp to Sand Hill for our first night's camp. We're going to come out, we're going to make a right, and we're going to go down here this is all 212 and it kind of comes around here and hooks a left and just keeps going. This is the shot in the arm road is still 212. We'll pass 213. So these are all places where you could put markers, you know, make left here. You can mark 213 if you wanted to. So we'll continue down 212 and it stays 212 until it hits this little road, which is 272. At this intersection, mark this one. This one becomes 272. So we'll do both sides. We'll do this one where it's 272 on that side. Add another one. 212 on this side and just for giggles we'll add one more here illustrating that this road is 272. Like I said come down 212 this road actually turns in and makes the left here and 212 stops and it becomes 272. So we'll scroll out 
272, we're gonna take that all the way around through here, coming past 214, which is this road. So you can mark that if you want to. Comes around here, and 272 actually makes this curve as well and continues down here through Sand Hill Camp. So Sand Hill Camp's off of 272 on this side, uh, but this is also 272 going this way. Okay. All right, so anyway, so we're gonna end up here at Sand Hill. So now you see we have over here on the left, we have all of our waypoints. So let's go back and build a track. So we're gonna scroll out. You can see all of your waypoints. 232, the East Tower, 245, Sanderson Cut, 202 and 125. Um, so now that you've gotten this far, maybe you're, uh, maybe you're gonna stop or you're gonna uh, go grab something to eat or whatever. Make sure that you right click your main folder. So Osceola Overnighter. Go down to save place as, um, save it wherever you want to save it. I suggest you come down here to save as type and click on that and then save it as a KML file. They're just a little bit easier to work with. Click save and it'll save to whatever folder you put it in. So now you have it saved. Now you can go back and go over to save to my places and it will actually put it up here in the my places section instead of temporary places. So there's the Osceola Overnighter expand that all right so now we've got it saved we're gonna come down and we're gonna start our track but first I'm gonna change this battery before it dies on me let's start with building a track so the first thing you're gonna want to do is you're gonna go up here to this little three-pointed line click on that it's add a new path and we are gonna title this one Osceola Overnighter Okay, so now we have that. If you look right here, it is actually attached to the Osceola Overnighter folder. We don't want that, we want it in tracks. So we'll grab it, scroll it up, put it in tracks. Now it's in my tracks folder, which is inside the Osceola Overnighter folder, which just makes everything look nice. The only way that you can add points and tracks is you have to go back into it, right click it, go to properties, and open this up. This box has got to be open in order to make your tracks. So if you look, as I bring my cursor out, you can see the, the cursor has changed uh, to where it goes back to the hand for grabbing it and moving it. Right click, Osteal Overnighters, properties, it brings that back up and you can move it all the way out of the way if you want. So our first point is going to be right here at 125 and 202 and you can use your scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in to get your point exactly where you want it so we'll say that's our first point to move the map you actually have to use the uh, arrow pad on your keyboard if you try to use the mouse here's what happens so you make your click and hold like you're going to be able to grab it and drag it and you do this you have a whole bunch of waypoints uh, don't freak out don't start over the way to get back to that is to go back to one of these, touch them, and they'll go green, and just right click, and you'll see they start to disappear until you get back to the one that you want. So there's the one that I want. All right, so we are going to scroll out, arrow key left. Here's a bend in the road. We'll put a point right here. There's that point. We'll come up here to the next bend, put that point, and looks like my line is white. So let's change that because it does not look good on a white Lime Rock Road. So you'll go up here to Style and Color. Choose your color. We'll make this path green. You can change all the hues and change it whatever you want. Click OK. You can see it there. It's not very wide. It all depends on how you like it. So if you want it wider, let me just click on this and you can build it out to be as thick as the road if you want it to. So we'll stop at four. Uh, your opacity is how visual it is so if you click down as you can see it's starting to kind of fade until it will eventually disappear so we'll put that back at 100 okay so there you can see it's pretty solid line i'm going to change that it's a little bit too big for me we'll drop it down to like two there we go so as we come past the anderson cut waypoint there scroll with the arrow you can do multiple arrows at the same time there there and you can make this as detailed and as loosey-goosey as you want so this one's kind of a loose version 245 all right we've already said that we're going to make a left here at 245 so let's say that i wanted each road to be its own color let's say this is overnighter 202 okay so there's forest road overnighter 202 to do the next road click on the path again and we'll say 245 okay go back into the properties 
style and color. We'll make this one red. Okay, get that out of the way. We'll start our waypoints right from where that one ended, right there in the middle of the intersection. So I'll kind of make this one a little bit detailed so you can come through. I mean, you can put as many points as you want. You can make this thing, you can follow right down the center of the road, however you want to do it. Um, if you mess one up, no big deal, just click on it. So I mean, you can make this thing as professional looking as you want. Uh, I don't do that because it doesn't matter that much. I just go kind of point to point. There's Bear Road, 204. So if that bothered you that it cut across the woods there, just go out here and just follow along the road until it gets straight again. Big, long, straight road. All right, so now we know there's 245. Okay, so now we have 202, 245, so on and so forth. So from here, I'm just gonna kind of very quickly go through and finish out this track. I'll call this the rest. Style and color, we'll make this one blue. Back to description, get that out of my way. All right, and very rude and crude, coming through here, 32. If you're good enough, you can do that all on the, on the fly. I'm not that good. Coming up here to Buckhead. One right in the middle of Buckhead. Continue going down 32. 212, 212D. Big Camp. Out of Big Camp. We're going to make a right. Twelve continues down through here. This is two thirteen. There's two twelve and two seventy two. Now we're on two seventy two. Just having fun. And boom, we're in the sand hill. Click OK. There we go. Now we have something usable. All right, so that's all we want to do, right? We just want a track that goes through the woods. We're not familiar with the woods. We found these certain things on uh, Google Earth or Onyx or Gaia. We just want to get a path so when we're out there with our GPS program, we don't have to worry about it. We can just follow the line. So what's next? Let's go over here to Osceola Overnighter. Right click, save place as. Same thing, make sure it's a KML file. Do you want to replace it? I do, because there's more stuff now. All right, cool. So let's get out of Google Earth and let's go into Onyx. So let's go back down to where we are going to concentrate. And that is from our house to the Osceola National Forest. I have all kinds of other stuff. Let's get rid of all this crap. Osceola Solar Ride, let's get rid of that. Osceola Day Trip, let's get rid of that. Osceola National Forest, let's get rid of that. Pan Adventure Trail, there we go. That should knock that out. All right, let's look. Yep, okay, so there's nothing here for Osceola. I remember we have our KML file that's sitting in our folder that we just saved from Google Earth. So we'll go here to Import Data, Select Files, Osceola Overnighter. We will open that and make sure we got everything we want. Let's save all 18 items, exit that. Make this look a little bit prettier if we want to. Save. And here is our track. All right, so there it is on Gaia. And you can use that as you travel. It'll show you where you are and you can follow your little track there. Um, let's go over to Onyx. I'm gonna do the same thing with Onyx. So same thing, my content, import, select from my computer, Osceola Overnighter, open. This is where I was telling you that you're gonna want to hit this button, import map data to a new folder. We'll import it. It'll do its magic thing. There it is, it's already set it up. So one thing I like to do to make sure that it's gone into a new folder is I'll click these three and I'll do add to folder just to make sure. Now I can see I've got imported uh, 1057 in the morning. It is 
10.57 in the morning, so I know that's mine. Cancel, exit out. I should have a new folder. There it is. Click on that. I can now come in here, rename folder 00 for Osceola Overnighter, save, and now I have it on my Onyx as well. So when one fails, I can switch over to the other. So that's Onyx. Go down here and click on the three pieces of paper stack, three lines, import layer, scroll down to where you see cloud storage or device, click on that, go straight to search, Osceola, that should be enough, Osceola Overnighter, click on that, it immediately starts to download, go back, now you have your track laid down on your Avenza map and you know for a fact that your Avenza map is going to work because it only runs off a GPS. Um, I've, I have had trouble with Onyx out in the forest where it won't pick up all the names of the roads and all that stuff because it's trying to do it off of the internet service or the phone service and all that stuff. Whereas this is just tracking you on your GPS. So that's it. It doesn't take too long. It's pretty easy um, as long as you have an idea of where you want to go. Uh, just jump on the internet, do some research, find out uh, some certain places maybe you want to camp or go check out and build it into your GPX file using Google Earth. It's super simple. All right, well, if you have any questions, please make sure you leave comments down below. Uh, I'll answer you back as soon as I can. All right, y'all have a good one and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.